Bismillah ar-Rahman ar-Rahim. Assalamu alaikum. Salah Khan here and today with the next topic the initial value theorem and the final value theorem. So I would try my best to you know do both of them in this single video. If it gets long so then I will split initial and final so I'll do them separately okay. So these are again the properties of uh, of the Laplace transform but the book has named it separately as theorems so we would also make a separate video on it okay. Now you call it theorem or theorem or whatever it is the pronunciation doesn't matter this is not an English class fine. So first of all let's start with the initial value theorem the initial value theorem and to discuss this first as as you know the the thing suggests it would tell us about the initial value of a function right but first it has some conditions on it so a signal must uh, you know uh, fulfill certain conditions uh, in order for this theorem to be applied on it the first condition is that x of t is 0 for t less than 0 All right, the second condition. The second condition is that it should not contain any impulses or higher order singularities at the origin. X of t must not contain any impulses or higher order singularities which are what the discontinuities at the origin also higher order derivatives of the impulse okay uh, that is the derivative of impulse is the unit step i believe yes so anyways you know this very well so these are the two conditions that x of t is zero for t less than zero all right and then it must not contain any impulses or singularity at the origin at t equal to zero if the signal is zero for some value of positive time it would not be considered fine now what does it say x of t is equal to uh, for t less than 0 you could uh, say it like this let's say my x of t is a signal x1 of t multiplied with a unit step signal u of t you can say it in this way as well fine so what does the theorem says the theorem says that if you approach this uh, the origin that if you approach the origin from the right side limit t approaching 0 plus x of t i would name it as x of 0 plus this would be equal to what the limit s approaching infinity s times x of s this is what the initial value theorem is this is what the initial value theorem is now uh, 0 plus and 0 minus so you do not need to confuse it and you know it very well basically uh, if this is your origin right and if you approach it from this side so the value just before the origin uh, that you say it, it would be you would call it as a zero minus why because you're approaching it from a minus side similarly if you approach the origin from the right side you would call this value as a zero plus the value just before the origin is that clear it is so why am i writing over here a zero plus is because this signal is already zero for the negative side and i know that very well i've already written the condition so i could not write a zero minus fine so i would write a zero plus why because it's not zero for that side is that clear so this is your initial value theorem now if you want to prove it if you want to prove it then how do we got this so by definition by definition what do we have we have that the Laplace transform x of s is given as this thing 
x of t exponential of negative st dt right now what do you have we already know that this is zero for the negative side this is a unilateral laplace transform so i would have it as zero to infinity or in this case if i am considering zero plus so i would write a zero plus to infinity x of t exponential of negative st integration is with respect to t isn't it like this? Now this is what? This is your unilateral Laplace transform. Now what do I have? I use a formula over here. I have two functions over here and they are both the functions of t and they are integrated with respect to t. So I use the formula of integration by parts. I use the formula of integration by parts. And what does that formula say? That formula says if you have two functions, let's say u multiplied to v integrated with respect to x. So what would be the integration of this? So the integration of this would be first like this. You take u outside and you take the integral of v with respect to x, right? And then you have a minus sign have a minus sign and you take what you take the integration of the derivative of u with respect to x first and then into the integration of v with respect to x and then this is whole integration with respect to x so this is the formula for what for the integration by parts so if I apply this formula over here, if my u is x and my v is exponential of negative t, so what do I have? This would become equal to uh, u is x of t multiplied to the integration of exponential of negative st with respect to t, right? Minus a whole integration, the bigger integration with respect to the derivative of u so the derivative of x of t with respect to t right into the integration of exponential of negative st with respect to t and this whole integration with respect to t is that fine this is equal to x of s which is the laplace transform so and of course the limit so the limits i would put from 0 plus to infinity and you know what is the meaning of zero plus basically this is the same zero but we are approaching it from one side so i would write it like this anyways now uh, now this equals what x of t into so the integration of exponential of negative st would be what it would be exponential of negative st upon negative s and putting the limits of t this would be 0 plus to infinity fine and then you have a minus minus sign this is 0 plus to infinity again the derivative of x of t with respect to t and the light is gone anyways let me complete this step and then we will continue when the light comes and this is multiplied to an exponential of negative st upon negative s and the whole with respect to t so we continue it when the light comes okay okay so where were we uh fine fine now so in this one we put the limits first we put the limits first and this is equal to so have a look now if you put the limit the higher limit uh, infinity so x of infinity wait x of infinity into exponential of negative s so t infinity so this would be by assuming s to be positive by default we have an exponential of negative infinity which would be zero so we would have a zero upon negative s multiplied to x of infinity so the overall thing would come out to be a zero then a minus when you put the value 0 plus so you have an x of 0 plus multiplied what multiplied uh, exponential of 0 would give you a 1 right and then upon negative s so this I would put a negative s over here and over here I would also write so then we do not get confused x of infinity into 0 
and whatever it is so this is for the first this is for the first then you have a minus sign and have a look this negative s is constant with respect to t so i would take it outside so this negative this negative would become a plus fine this negative this negative has become a plus and i would also take the s outside so i would have a one upon s outside as well and now what do i have i have the remaining as zero plus to infinity the derivative of x of t with respect to t into exponential of negative st with respect to t is that fine till here it is now uh, so have a look this is also a one upon s this negative and this negative would also cancel out so i can take a one upon s common from the overall x of s is equal to what it's equal to 1 upon s and then you have an x of 0 plus x of 0 plus and then you have what plus this thing plus uh, 0 plus to infinity the derivative into exponential of negative st with respect to t isn't it fine it is okay now now have a look if i write this equation as the derivative of x of t if i take it like this which implies if i take 0 plus to infinity derivative of x of t with respect to t exponential of negative st with respect to t can I not write it like this s times x of s minus x of 0 plus? Can I not write it like this? I can. I can write it like this. And I believe this is also the property of the unilateral Laplace transform, which we may see later. So from here, what do you get? From here, what do you get? Isn't this a Laplace transform of this function, the derivative of x of t? It is so anyways if I put the limit as approaching infinity on both the sides if I approach if I take a limit and I would take it over here in this very step as well if if I say that my limit as approaches infinity and similarly on this side as well limit as approaches infinity now what would we have what would we have so if you put an infinity over here again this whole if this becomes zero the overall everything would become zero right so this would imply what the left hand side would become zero and this right side now if you put infinity over here so s uh, times x of s this would be the case and then minus uh, so by putting limit s tends to infinity this is independent of s so it would not have any effect so you would have like this you would have a negative x of 0 plus and then you have a plus the limit s tending to infinity s times x of s and this is what we have already we already know this is the proof of it this is the proof of it. we have proved the initial value theorem we have initial we have proved the initial value theorem now we have some uh, more conditions i would say if the uh, laplace transform is uh, in a rational form if the laplace transform or the system function you could say if it is in a rational form so i would write over here if x of s is in rational form so what would we have let's say the first condition is if so we would have the degrees right we have a degree of uh, we would have a certain degree polynomial in the numerator certain degree polynomial in the denominator so number one is if you have the degree of denominator is greater than the degree of numerator so in that case you can find the the initial value theorem is valid in that case right whereas in in the second case if the degree of numerator is greater than the degree of 
denominator so in that case the the initial value theorem is not valid fine now if the difference of the degrees is equal to if, if the difference is again if the difference is greater than one so again we have a condition the third if what do you have degree of denominator minus degree of numerator if this difference is greater than one if this difference is greater than one then what would be the case x of 0 plus would always be equal to 0 then x of 0 plus would always be equal to 0 this is the third point and the fourth point is if the difference is equal to 1. We have a single difference of the polynomial. If one is second or the other is third or right. So I write the fourth point over here. If degree of denominator minus degree of numerator is equal to 1. So only then we would have a finite value. That could be anything a finite value of x of 0 plus which means in this very case this is properly valid that is the initial value theorem and I hope you have understood it fine what that what did it tell us uh, if I if I revise it first so first we have the two conditions on it right it tells you the initial value write the value uh, that is just after zero when you approach it from the right side we use the integration by parts formula we did the mathematical calculations to prove it then we have some prop uh, some 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 properties or some points if it's in a rational form so the degree of denominator is greater than numerator only then you can calculate it uh, calculate this thing and when that is valid uh, only if the difference is equal to 1 fine if the numerator degree is greater you, this is not valid similarly if the degree is greater than by 1 units then always you will have a 0 this is valid but then the signal value would always be 0 that would be the, the, the signals uh, property the signal characteristics so that's the initial value theorem so I rub the board first and then we do what then we study the final value theorem also in this video okay now the next is the final value theorem the final value theorem and now again as the name suggests this would tell us about the final value of a function and only if the signal is bounded if the signal uh, not bounded if the signal is, has a finite final value if it's approaching to infinity so of course it would not tell us if it has a finite ending value again we have a set of conditions and I removed them by mistake the first two are the very same but uh, anyways I would write it again now the conditions are what the first condition is again the same that x of t is 0 for t less than 0 right the second condition the second condition is again no impulses or singularities no impulses or singularities at origin now we have a third condition now we have a third condition the third condition is that the poles of s times x of s if you multiply the system function with an s poles of s times x of s so this must lie in the left half of the s plane is that fine this is the condition number three and if i say the four so this is for a signal that for which it could be not calculated so anyway this is not a condition i would write it at the end i would write it at the end 
So what does the final value theorem says? The final value theorem says that if you have a signal uh, x of t and if you approach the value of t to infinity, fine, which means you want to find the value at x equal to infinity. So what would you do? You take the limit, you take s approaching to 0, s times x of s. This is what the final value theorem is. This would give you the value of the signal at, at t equal to infinity. Is that clear? It is. Now again we would uh, write the mathematical proof of it. So, uh, well again I did a mistake by rubbing that equation. But you know very well that the Laplace transform equation as we took x of s and I would take it from a 0 to infinity x of t exponential of negative s t with respect to t. We know this very well. Then you solve it again by integration by parts in the very same uh, manner as we did as we did in in the previous case and one equation we got we got an equation and what was that that was this equation that when you have a 0 plus to infinity right uh, you have the derivative of x of t with respect to t into an exponential of negative s t integration with respect to t this was equal to s times x of s minus x of 0 plus. So you check it in your notes. You, 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 we just saw this equation before rubbing the board. And in this equation then we put the limits. So in the first case we put the limit as t approaching s approaching to infinity. In this case we put the limit as s approaching to 0. So we, we put the limit as s approaching to 0 on both the sides now. So what would it give us? This would be 1. So we would be left only with this thing. Isn't it like this? Uh, let me write it over here. What do you think? Yes. I would wrap it from here. And if I put the limit s approaching to 0. If I put the limit s approaching to 0 on both the sides. So have a look now if you, this is independent of this. So s approaching 0 over here this would give you a 1. So you would be only left with the integration of a derivative with respect to t. So the integration of a derivative would be again the same function. So this would give me this would imply that x of t. This thing left hand side would give me an x of t and the limits would be 0 plus to infinity. Fine. The integration of the derivative is back the same function x of t. And now you have it like this limit s approaching to 0 s times x of s and minus that thing is independent of the value of s. So you have an x of 0 plus. Now this implies what? This implies again you have an x of infinity first. You put an x of infinity and then you have a minus x of 0 plus. This is equal to limit s approaching 0 s times x of s minus x of 0 plus. So x of 0 plus x of 0 plus cancels out from both sides. And have a look. You got what you wanted. x of infinity is equal to limit s approaching to 0 s times x of s and isn't this what we wanted to have it is it is so that was just the simple proof of it this this final theorem now tells you about the final value of the system now i also have some set of signals for which this is not valid so what is this not valid for so final value theorem cannot be calculated for Final value we know cannot be 
calculated for periodic signals right and why because they would just be uh, repeating again and again from negative infinity to positive infinity and they will be oscillating between their maximum and minimum values right and they cannot be calculated for uh, for unbounded signals because they grow without bound and they approach infinity and we cannot calculate that value and also for marginally stable systems marginally stable system etc we may also have uh, many more uh, marginally stable so you will, I would not touch it over here uh, they, that you would see in the control systems course in a great detail what are marginally stable systems what are absolutely stable and what are unstable systems so anyways that is not the topic to discuss over here the absolutely stable are that all the poles lie in the left half plane anyways not our concern I finish this video over here see you in the next one very soon inshallah till then take care of yourselves and everyone around you do remember me in your prayers do subscribe to the channel goodbye